You are my dad. You are my God. Love it. I listen to your show all the time. I'm 23, single, and I think you're great. I think you're creating men out here for us. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been dating so many girls now. Tom, I just want to say I'm a big fan of you, first of all. It's just you're the man of, uh, you're talking the right stuff. We need more guys out there listening to you. Yes, um, you do. I think yes. the country would be a lot better off. I agree. God bless America, sir. You run an extraordinary show, Tom. Every well, time I listen, I look at my own life and I go, wow, this is how I've lived and I feel so proud of it now. I hope that guys learn more about PMS and the I know, I know all about it. Dear women, uh, in many cases, although not all, are insufferable. And when they are insufferable, I don't want them around. I make it real easy. I treat every girl like a dog. In that when they beg for food when they're puppies, I don't feed them. Yeah, training women is like housebreaking a puppy, and you do have to do it. I, I had a woman one time, I used to roll up a newspaper and whack her on the nose with it. No, I do the same thing, but I use a Very, very effective. Here's a way to end this election, in my opinion. How's that? Just say, hey, at the end of the year, we're going to tally up what we spent. And we're going to send you a bill because we're not going to run a deficit anymore. We're going to send you a bill for your fair share. If we ante up as a civilization here in the United States to the debt that we owe, a lot of what, we're, what we do would end. Is that a guinea pig in the background? What's that noise? What noise are you talking about? Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> That's the noise your listeners appreciate. I have no idea why anyone would vote for McCain and her. Maybe because they want to have the first vice president who's a gilf. <laughs> you got a point there. <laughs> I haven't been happy with George Bush uh, over the last few years. Trust me, I was a huge supporter. Uh, I, I won't say what capacity, but I've been a big supporter a lot of How, ways. How'd that work out, by the way, that George Bush thing? Well, you got to give him credit because... For what? Uh, Walking uh, upright? I have a tremendous respect for what you do uh, in, in the relationship and, and, and just living. But I have even more respect hearing that you see the realities that, that you do see not only in, in life but in politics. And, and I'm ready to see this old man go home and sit in his chair and watch TV. If you're somebody I want to go bear hunting with or somebody I want to have a beer with, uh, that's all wonderful, but you're not good enough to be present. Exactly. And that, that all payment has got going for is if I had a six-pack at the bar, I'd take her cougar butt home. <laughs> Barack Obama, if he would have chose Hillary Clinton, he most likely would have had a slam dunk win. Would you agree? I don't know if it would have been a slam dunk win because I think the uh, conservative uh, talk show hosts on AM radio who love to uh, think they are somehow another wing of the federal government. You know, you have the judicial branch, you got the executive branch, you got the legislative branch, and then you got the windbag branch, that one of the main branches of government. They would have uh, had a field day if Hillary Clinton were uh, nominated. I'm sitting here with my aunt, and we're huge Brock supporters, but we want to know if we can write you in. Oh, you can write me in. Uh, can I now? <laughs> I'm going to write myself in, but I'm not going to use ink, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I'm going to write my full name, all three, first, middle, and last. I'm going to need a second page. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. With wide open telephones on this Friday, anything goes here at 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866 Dane on the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Hello. Hey, Tom. Um, I just wanted to say that I think the McCain campaign has deliberately set him up for failure by continuing to not do any research on anybody that they bring in, starting with Sarah Palin and now Joe the Plumber. I mean, would they not think that any blogger or anybody can just go online and look up who these people actually are and what they've actually done? Well, that's the thing. You know, in the old days of Dirty Tricks, it was real hard to do that. Uh, but now with uh, Zaba Search and Intellius and 800 U.S. Search and, and Google and Yahoo, uh, it's pretty easy to check up on somebody's credentials and to see what uh, what they're really all about. Yeah, you can go to Google and type in the Keating Five and see that John McCain went down to uh, 
his uh, little resort down in the Bahamas and didn't pay him till two years afterwards. So, I mean, McCain's just... He's the same old politics that we've had. But not only that, if you look up uh, the, the Keating Five story in the New York Times, go to the database of the New York Times. There's the name Robert Wurzerbergel. Yeah, exactly, because it's the, the guy's son-in-law. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous what these people think that they can actually get by the American people. Wurzelbacher, actually... whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> the Joe the Plumber guy. His, his last name appears in the Keating Five story. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Another thing, Tom, I wanted to tell you is that you need to take Like It's 101 and do what Scientology did and make a religion out of it so maybe you can get a tax break from it. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, do it, Tom. So then, you, uh, then not only would I be getting a tax break, but women would have to get down on their knees in front of me. Uh, instead of clergy boys, we could just have women do it, you know? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, Tom, I want to be the first priest, so uh, when you do that, let me know. All right, Dane, you're in. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones with Victor. You're on the Tom Likas Show, Victor. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going great. Um, I need a little bit of direction. Um, I've been in a relationship for now, what, three years, going on four years by the end of this month, if not November, something like that. Uh, her and I, we had a child together. This was a year and a half, a year and a half ago, and then for some reason, we're just constantly. You, arguing. Did you say you're married? No, I did not say I was married. Why? Why did you have a kid? Um, you know what? I don't know. To be honest with wait, you, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? I don't know. Well, I felt in in the point of my life that I was ready to have a kid, so I. Wanted but you were to not married. One. You were not married. That's true. And you, you did not know if you would be in this relationship permanently or for a long period of time or not? Actually, well, I did. At first, I had the intention to No, no, no. You it. thought you were, but you didn't know. You're right. Yes. Yes. And, uh, again, it's just like, you know, I'm the kind of guy that's like, all right, let's meet in the middle. You know, what do we need to do to solve this? And she's just like, no, you know, this is my way and this is, you know... If you either like me, great. If you don't, move on. I'm just like, huh. Well, she doesn't want to, you know. I mean, you tell me. I mean, is it, is it, I mean, as far as being in a relationship, isn't it like, uh, you know, basically meeting in the middle, you know, compromising, basically, isn't that what Well, it, what I have always said about relationships is if you have to compromise, you're with the wrong person. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, pretty much All this talk about compromise is just a way of excusing the fact that you've picked the wrong person and trying to find a way to live with it. I see. So I've pretty much then screwed up. I am out of the compromise business. Anyone who doesn't like me the way I am doing things the way I do them should just hit the road, hit the bricks, get out. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I pretty much just screwed up. <laughs> uh, and you know you did. And, and you know, and you know what I do is I was married before and divorced, then, and I was going through counseling and have you. I went to two different counselors, and there, you know, each both counselors were saying, you know, relationship is work. You know, it's like getting two companies and trying to get them to mesh, but you both have to compromise. And now, like, you know, I'm thinking, okay, these people have whole degrees. All right, if that's what they say, and you know, they specialize in relationships, then. You know, I have to be somewhat right. Yeah, but then and, maybe you don't need to be in a relationship. Maybe. Maybe you don't need to be in one. Maybe, yeah. I, mean, I got well, enough work to do. And, you know, I got maybe, enough work to do. So yeah. I, I've got enough work to do, and most people, people in their lives have done enough compromising. You know what? You're never going to be a rock star or a major league baseball player. You've already begun compromising. I think we lost him. What are you going to do? Bill on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Bill. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Doing good. I just uh, wanted to call and uh, talk about Sarah Palin uh, appearing on SNL. Yeah? What about it? I just uh, I think it's really a last ditch effort by the McCain campaign. Uh, I think their their whole campaign's falling apart. Well, just you know, like McCain went on uh, Letterman finally last night after flaking on him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's, and was willing to withstand all the beating he took from Letterman last night. Did you see any of that? No, I didn't catch it. He beat the crap out of him. And McCain had to sit there and take it. And he knew it was coming. Yeah, I mean, So you know it. McCain is desperate, and that by Palin going on Saturday Night Live, it's the same deal. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty absurd. He did a pretty terrible job of the debates, too. I think people finally saw that he didn't really have any of the answers that they were looking for. Well, you can see also, by the way, how angry he gets. And I don't think anybody liked that. Yeah, I hear you. Got to smoke more. Am I still on here? What's that? I said he should smoke, smoke a little reefer. You know, relax. Who should, me? No, uh, McCain should. Oh, McCain should. Yeah. Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, you know, after uh, being a POW, he could probably get medical marijuana. Probably could, post-traumatic stress. He can get his card. He should. I'm trying to imagine McCain on weed. I, I think it'd loosen him up. He's a little, he's a little, I mean, you see him in the debates. He's, he's got, got a these, stick up his ass. Yeah, I know. He's got these frozen arms. He needs to put like a tie stick up his ass. What? He's got these frozen arms in the debate. It looks like he's about to have a heart attack. <laughs> yes, he, he, it looks like the blood vessels are about to burst. Yeah, he's just going to fall to the floor and start screaming about Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie? Charlie in the, in the trees. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well. But, uh, I, I do think that uh, it's going to be a landslide victory. No, no, but, uh, it's not going to be a landslide. It might, it, it might be uh, a significant uh, 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 advantage in the electoral college, but in the popular vote, it's not going to be a landslide. Not this time, right? Not this time. Well, I'm, all, I'm, I'm really worried about uh, voter fraud and this way. I mean, it's, it's been a problem. I'm worried about, I'm life. worried about plumber fraud. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't even care about that guy. I mean, even, I mean, it didn't, I only, I only think it hurts McCain because really the guy doesn't make $250,000 a year. The guy so, may not even be a plumber. Yeah, I mean, it seems, it's, it's just totally ridiculous to even talk about him. But I, I mean, I, whether he's a plan or not, I mean, I don't, I don't think he was a plan. I just think he was a guy who, who saw Obama and approached him, but, Oh, you you think that was just a random thing? You don't think it was a campaign dirty trick? Uh, it's possible. Don't I mean, you think it's interesting that uh, this person is related to the uh, guy who went to prison in the Keating Five scandal? Uh, and John McCain was one of the Keating Five. It was before your time, son. But uh, look it yeah. up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about the Keating Five. Well, scandal, I'll but... tell you what. If the uh, back uh, in the 80s, there was a scandal involving, just like the bank thing that's going on now, all the banks going broke. Yeah. Uh, we had the savings and loan scandal in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And one of the savings and loans was Lincoln Savings and Loan, a, uh, a, a savings and loan that was owned by a guy named Charlie Keating, who was one of the Phoenix 40. He was one of those powerful people in Arizona. And... Yeah. Uh, there were five people in the Senate who were charged with, they were called the Keating Five. And these were people charged with uh, being involved in helping uh, Keating uh, obtain favor in Congress. And one of them happened to be a guy named John McCain. Mm -hmm. and, and the son-in-law, Charlie Keating, went to prison, and so did his son-in-law, a guy named Robert Wurzelbacher, who is the father of Joe the Plumber. Interesting. So do you really think this was a coincidence? Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a coincidence in the sense that his son's also a, a Republican. No, 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 no. He's the son of 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 the son-in-law of Charlie Keating. Right. You think this ran? And then it turns out he may not even be a plumber. No license. Not a member of the plumbers union. <laughs> yeah. You don't think it's possible that's a campaign dirty trick? It's possible, but it's not really much of a trick. It's. It's kind of just uh hey, Well, I'm not saying it wasn't a lame trick. Doesn't mean yeah. it wasn't a trick. And it doesn't mean it wasn't somebody attempting to move the needle by doing something underhand. Yeah, sure. I mean, I I I don't doubt I don't doubt it, but I'm more worried about like uh purging people from the from the uh regi from registration. Well, okay. Uh, and again, I think that shows you the priorities of the average person. A lot of people, uh, they don't want to hear negative campaigning. They don't want to hear dirty tricks. They just don't. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show.
It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. Anything goes. 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, father. Son, how are you? How are you, man? Not much. Long time listener, man. Hey, I wanted to call you. I thought you'd find this funny. I, I don't, you know, I, I just got back onto the radio, and uh, you know, Joe the plumber. Did you know he's not even a licensed plumber? Yeah, we we've said that many times. You just haven't been listening. Gosh darn it, Tom! Why do you do this to me? Uh, there's more to it than that, John. Uh, the National Enquirer is saying that Joe the plumber is the son of Robert Wurzelbacher who went to federal prison for his involvement in the Keating Five scandal. And if you uh, don't know this, the Keating Five were five U.S. senators uh, who got uh, slapped by the Ethics Committee of the United States Senate. One of those was uh, Senator John McKay. That's right. Unbelievable. I also wanted to uh, mention to you, since, uh, you know, I know you're voting for Barack, and I just decided that uh, I'm going to do that myself. Um and I keep having people tell me, you know, by doing this, you're going to get all these tax increases, you're a business owner, your capital gains is going to go up. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's not uh, what's most important to me. You know, I was thinking that uh, the, the middle class, I think, is uh, is what we really got to look at because, you know, my business relies on the middle class. And if they're not striving then uh, and, and don't succeed, then, you know, I'm not going to succeed long term. So I'm going with Barack, man. Yeah, and I agree with you. I'm in the advertising business. If people don't buy the stuff I sell, that affects my business. Exactly. And, I need and, uh, my listeners to have the money to buy the stuff I'm selling. And that's the, that's the same with me. My customers and my customers' customers are the middle class, and, and that's what I'm going to rely on. So i, I got to go that route. Good for you, John. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Jay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Jay. What's going on, man? Still on the radio show I, here. I wanted to, to get your advice, man. I'm, I'm Right now I'm involved in a in a train wreck relationship that I got myself into. Why'd you do that? Well, I met this chick, and first of all, I was a true Like It's 101 follower. But I met this 21-year-old chick that's really hot, just about a 10. Uh, I met her up in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, I traveled for work. I got there. And this girl, at first, you know, we were all romantic. And then she, she left her boyfriend to come and move in with me. I was living with roommates. And then... I guess we'll never know. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Tiffany on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to say, um, first of all, that I love your show, even though I don't necessarily agree with what you say about women. But I'm actually calling because I wanted to know what you think about um, same-sex marriage and what seems to be the problem everyone really has with it, because I don't really understand what's so awful about it. Um, well, first of all, I don't think government should be in the marriage business. I, I think that should be left to uh, religious organizations. Uh, because I, agree. I frankly believe that marriage is uh, a religious issue. <laughs> and I don't think the government ought to be involved in divorce or anything else. Yeah, right on. But being that they are, I don't see how you can discriminate against any group of people. As far as I'm concerned, any two people who want to form a corporation by signing a marriage certificate should be able to do it. A and I've always said uh, gays and lesbians have the same right to be miserable as anybody else. <laughs> If gays and lesbians, you know, I always say, be careful what you wish for. If gays and I, you honestly, folks, and I'm talking directly to the gay community right now, you don't want this. You don't want this because you've got the perfect crime. When your life partner comes up to you and says, I wish we could get married, you, you just say, it's illegal. I wish it was legal, but it's not. And uh, You've got the perfect excuse. In I'm fact, so I, rather anything. than having Proposition 8, I wish we had another proposition uh, that said that uh, heterosexual people can't get married anymore. Let the gay people have that. Well, I don't agree with that. I'm engaged right now, and it's wonderful. You're, you're, you're a lesbian? No, I'm engaged. I don't agree you, with... You can be a no. lesbian and be engaged. It's California. But I'm not a lesbian, and I am engaged, and I think it's a wonderful thing. Well, women generally think it's a wonderful thing. 
Yeah, but, but I'm not pushing it off on him. I mean, we've been together for almost nine years now. I've that has nothing to do with it. it uh, just because, look, it, 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 committing murder is wrong today. It'll be wrong nine years from now. Just because something, uh, just because you've been doing something for nine years doesn't mean you need to uh, sign a contract. Well, no, but I think it's a matter of opinion and a matter of what you feel. Well, you know? obviously it is, and if uh, if gay and lesbian people want to get married, I really have no problem with that. I am going to vote no on Proposition 8. Right on. Uh, I, I am, uh, but again, um, I say be careful what you wish for. The fact that you can now legally get married in California means that the person you date will start pressuring you uh, in a very hetero way. Why, when are we getting married? When are we getting married? When are we getting married? Yeah, if you don't want that, that's not cool. I have cool gay friends who have said, oh, yeah, we would get married if it were legal. And they're almost like winking. <laughs> you know, oh I, I would love to say to the women I've dated over the years, well, I would love to get married. But let me give you a promise ring instead. You know, it's kind of the same thing. You know, <laughs> I can't, I wish I could get married, but that, that, you know how the law is. I can't do it. Would love that. Wouldn't be a way out, you know. But I understand what you're saying. The last question I wanted to ask you was, um, what kind of uh, books could you recommend for someone who wants to be a little bit more politically aware? You know, I did go to good schools and everything, but I didn't feel that they taught me the things that I need to know. Um, to make the most informed political decisions, and I wanted to know if you could recommend. Well, some clearly, the, the way people become politically informed today is on the internet, uh, and that is by uh, by reading, for one thing, the websites of the politicians, knowing what the bias is there, yeah. and, and reading their material. Uh, you know, if they say they got an economic plan, go to their website and read it. Find out what it is. See what they're proposing. See if you can understand what they're saying. Um, also, there are a variety of blogs. Some of them are, are trash, but look for the ones that are the most read and, and try to read the opinions of everybody. Yeah, I just feel like there's so much crap out there, you know, and I, I just don't yes, know. Yes, but there are really ways to find out which blogs get the most hits and which ones the most people are reading. Uh, believe me, the ones that are lousy fall to the bottom, and the ones that have value for people go to the top. And, uh, you get a lot of information that way. Um, also, um, I read, uh, uh, for example, the uh, editorial pages of the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post and the New York Times. Uh, and uh, I used to read the Los Angeles Times, but nobody really reads the L.A. Times anymore. Uh, but uh, I, I try to read the editorial pages, the op-ed pages and what have you. They're very informative. The Wall Street Journal is a very conservative editorial page. Uh, but it's not like the ranting, raving lunatics of talk radio. They're all people who are, uh, you know, intellectual, reasonably uh, well thought out theses. I may uh, agree sometimes and disagree other times, but you learn a lot. Right on. Well, thank you. Can you blow me Yeah, up, but please? the problem with books and politics is that by the time a book is written and published, it's old. That's what I'm finding. Right. So you need to read more current stuff. I, I tell you something. The Wall Street Journal, if you can get past the fact that it's called the Wall Street Journal, is some of the most fascinating writing there is. Try it. I will try it. Thank you very much. All right, Tiffany. Bye. Uh, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday at 1 800 5800 Tom. It's 1 800 5800 866. Six six Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I uh, wanted to call and talk to you about Joe the plumber. It sounds like you guys need to be educated a little on the whole. Uh, so my... let me understand. The problem is I am uneducated, and well, you are educated. Is that right? Well, I am educated on the whole licensed contractor issue. I would I would consider myself uh, 
obviously more knowledgeable than you and your your callers right now. I don't. Uh, I don't so you are licensed in Ohio, and you know the laws of the state of Ohio, and specifically of Lucas County, Ohio, which is where Toledo, Ohio, is located. So tell us about the rules of licensing in Lucas County, Ohio. We're listening. Well, I'm, I'm all ears. I want to be educated. In Lucas County, Ohio. Same as any other county, you can no, work under a no, license. No, no, it's contractor. not the same as every other county. That's not true. Uh, Lucas County, Ohio, has already uh, announced uh, what their opinion is about people uh, being plumbers and not being licensed. But let's hear what you know about Lucas County that I don't. You know. can work. You can work under a licensed plumber. You don't. Ha not every. Not every plumber on the payroll. Uh, has to be Joe, licensed. the plumber uh, does not work under a licensed plumber. Uh, you haven't read the story. You need to be educated. Well, he obviously has worked worked under a licensed plumber. He has plumbing experience. He's working on take. You have to have experience to take your licensure exam, which he's in the process of. It is possible he is not even a plumber. Do you understand that? Currently, not a plumber. Right, but, but, but you know what plumber. he is? He's the son of somebody who was connected to the Keating Fund. Now, that's that. That is that's an opinion. No, no, that's, that's a fact. Reaching. It's you get. Uh, it's a fact. Tom, he, Tom, it's honestly, a fact. Do, you, do, you, do you consider the National Enquirer a credible uh, Actually, uh, not resource? only do I consider it credible, uh, I, happen to, credible? I happen to know the editor of the National Enquirer, uh, one Mike Walker, who's been a guest on this program many times. I've known Mike going back more than 20 years. Okay, just because and I'm you know telling Mike, you, I trust him before I trust you. Incredible uh, newspaper. That's all I'm saying. Uh, again, you tell me that this isn't a fact. Tell me that t you show me that this stuff isn't true, and I'll listen. I can't tell you that. I you haven't even seen. Enough. You haven't even seen the story in the National Enquirer, have you? That was a pathetic. You Democratic haven't even seen the story. Little. You have not even seen the story, have you? This, uh, which which story? Yeah, I've seen the story. Yeah, well, uh, here you're, you're already talking about the credibility of the National Enquirer without having read the story. Now, now, you tell me specifically what's wrong with the story. I want to hear it. Specifically. What's wrong with the story is you guys are calling Joe the Plumber a fraud with no base. That's the first line in the that's the first line in the story. The nation's newest celeb, Joe the Plumber, is a fraud. It says it right here. Okay, a headline. Do you believe every headline? That's not a headline. It's the first line in the story. Okay, do you believe every first line of a story you read? Doesn't what? matter whether I believe every one. I believe this one. And the reason I believe it is because uh, yesterday we were talking uh, about that's this. Why, that's why I call you it know Trump. nothing about this, and you're not educating anybody because you have I no information. I say it's entirely accurate you have no, no information. Story, you know, know you have that's no that's information, and you're not in a position to educate anybody. I am in a position to educate you about life. No, contracts. you are not because you do not. not you do not Columbia. work. You do not work in Lucas County, Ohio. You do not know the people involved. You That's did irrelevant. not. You did not read. Oh, it's irrelevant. You did not need to read the quotes from the woman in charge of licensing in Lucas County, Ohio, who has been quoted on this particular specific issue with this particular specific you're individual. You're talking about union people. You're talking about union people, and of course, he's gonna... not even a member. of... Of a union, do you know that? I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about the people you're getting your information from in Ohio or union. This is a person who's. A, this is not a union person. I don't know if they belong to a union or not. This is the person in charge of licensing for Lucas County, Ohio. Guarantee they 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 have a strong ties to the union or they really prove the it. Union. I'm listening. Prove it. I can't prove it. Tom. Right, you can't prove anything. <laughs> You've got nothing. I wouldn't say that. I got, I don't You've have got anything. nothing. You You've is, got nothing. I'll tell you what I got. Nothing. This is just another example. You've got nothing. What oh, you've got, weird. what you've got is the son-in-law of Charles Keating, Tom, who's, Tom. who spent time in federal prison, and you've got his son a... pretending to be a plumber at a Barack Obama rally, and, and, and it's just an amazing plumber. coincidence that uh, John McCain, who was a member of the Keating Five, who is a butt buddy of Charles Keating of Lincoln Savings and Loan, and, and, and the guy who went to prison because of that scandal, I Robert Wurzel, that, that, that it's not reaching at all. That. It is not that reaching at all. These that. are facts. You have no that. facts. You got I'm nothing. You just have a big mouth and a telephone. You've got no facts. I've got facts, and you don't want to hear them. These are facts. 
These are facts. Okay, I believe that Joe, Joe the Plumber has nothing to do with the Keating Five. You guys trying to link him with the Keating he, Five? Of course he does. His family. father went to prison hey. as a result of the Keating Five scandal. His Joe the Plumber's father was the son-in-law of Charles Keating. Do you deny that? I don't deny that. I, I don't it's have, a fact. I don't know about that it's a story. fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Are, think, do you think? Do you think this is just some amazing coincidence that the son of the son-in-law of Charlie Keating, the son of the man who went to federal prison in the Keating Five scandal, do you think this is a coincidence that this guy with no plumbing license and no evidence that he's ever fixed a sink stood up and started talking to Barack Obama in the middle of a of a, a of some event? Do you think this is a coincidence? You're an idiot. You're a bigger moron than I thought. If you believe that. I don't think you. I don't think you really think I'm an idiot, Tom. And honestly, I uh, no, no. It's clear that you're an idiot. Uh, listen, I don't. It's not just my opinion. It's the saying. opinion of everybody else listening right now. No, no, no. I don't think you even believe everything you're saying. I oh, think yes, you're just, I do. Yes, I, I do. And I'll tell you what, uh, these uh, stories about uh, uh, Robert Wurzelbacher, it's from the New York Times, it's from uh, various sources. Wurzelbacher has nothing to do with the Keating Five, just because he ended up yes. with some money from... Yes, he did! Doesn't, doesn't, make him a, doesn't make him a crook. He was sentenced to... A, he, he has served approximately 26 months in federal prison as a result of the Keating Five scandal. For Wurzelbacher, I meant Joe Wurzelbacher. So, so you know who these people are. You know them. So you're a plant, too. Just cause his, just cause you're his, another plant like the rest of them. Just cause his so you're is, another plant like the rest of them, aren't you? That's the time you're is, another plant. Joe the Plumber was a plant, and now Jason the Caller is a plant, too. Hey, Tom. Had enough, pal. Tom like is. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas. Wide open telephones. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joe, 15-year-old Joe. You're not a plumber, are you, Joe? No, hell no. <laughs> Just checking. All right, hey, what's up, Tom? How's it going? I'm doing okay. Hey, man, I have a question for you, bro. I, um, I, you know, I listen to the show religiously and stuff, and I, um, I was just wondering, what do you, what like, do you have any advice for me, like, what kind of career I should go into, so I can be like a, a millionaire just like you? What kind of career to go into? Yeah. Well, the first thing I recommend is that you get a college education. Oh yeah, of course. a good one. Yeah. And you study something useful, not something that uh, is there to kill time until you figure out what you want to be when you grow up. Do you know yeah. what you want to be when you grow up, Joe? Uh, well, actually, I was looking into, like, corporate law and stuff like that. That's good. That's, uh, uh, there'll always be a need for attorneys. Yeah. Especially corporate attorneys. Yeah, especially now, huh? Yeah. So <laughs> I think you're on a good path. Uh, work hard. Study hard. Don't waste your money. Don't get tied up with a girlfriend. Do not impregnate anybody. Absolutely not. I mean, these are all important things to remember. Yeah. It doesn't matter if somebody's in love with you. It doesn't matter if she's a 10. It doesn't matter what it is. Until you're an attorney, don't commit to anyone. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, thanks to your help, I'm no longer a virgin. <laughs> really? Yeah. Look at that. How did you pull that off? Well, I, I was talking to some chick. You know, she liked me and stuff. She wanted to be my um, girlfriend and stuff, but, you know, I didn't allow it. So I told her, yeah, you know what? I like you, too. I got in the past and... Bye bye. <laughs> How did you react to that? Uh, she was pretty pissed off, I guess, telling her friends, you know, he's a jerk off. And a, um... well, what do you care? Exactly. Who cares? Yeah. Hey, Joe, I think you're you're uh, on the right path here. Thanks. All right, take note with uh, "Don't Tase Me, Bro" and the Jesus style. All right, Joe. Here you go. What did I do? Get off me! No way! Get off my sister! Get the f off me, man! I didn't do it. Don't taste me, bro. Don't taste me. I can't do
One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Bill. Hey, long time listener, um, first time caller. Thank you. I just I just had a question, and then I just wanted to give a scenario for you, um, and and what your opinion is on the Prop Eight as far as tax benefits for the quote unquote married homosexuals or gay partners, and then also the effects it'll have on medical benefits. And then the scenario I wanted to tell you is... Well, first that- of all, let me talk to you about medical benefits. Uh, uh, in California, I don't know if it's most, but many, many companies now have domestic partners benefits uh, for gay people and many for straight people as well. Okay. So I don't know that that, that is going to be that big a difference. As far as uh, tax exemptions and tax deductions are concerned... Uh, let's face it, uh, there just aren't that many gay people in the population. There's, uh, the gay people themselves estimate the uh, population to be about 10%. Uh, uh, some other people say it's less, but uh, let's go with 10%. Uh, then uh, 100% of the 10% are not going to get married. We're not talking about a big difference here. Okay. But you can't, look, you, you can't provide this to one group and not another. And in California, we have the UNRU Act. You can't discriminate against people uh, because of their uh, sexual orientation. Okay. I've got a buddy of mine. He's probably uh, his low 40s. He's living with his mother who's old. She can't live on her own. They're living together. But he's not allowed to claim her as a dependent. Should he be discriminated against? Should he be discriminated against? Well, uh, again, uh, he's not married to his mother. Well, he can't, because she's his mother. Right, but gay people also can't marry their mother. Hello? I, I, I just made my point. Buy a better phone. one eight hundred five eight hundred. 800 It's Danny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm wondering if I would have been on hold so much if it weren't for that first caller. I have no idea. Well, basically, I, I was calling to get advice on how to get on the radio, and that was the first caller. So I've been on hold for over two hours. I'm kind of uh, exhausted, to be honest with you. My ears hurting from well, holding the phone up. Sorry about that. Let's say hi here to Andy on the Top Like a Show. Hello. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Going great. Uh, I just wanted to bring up a point. Solve about, that uh, problem. Huh? I said I just wanted to bring up a point. I'm sorry. I'm kind of in a crowded mall right now. I can hear that. Um, uh, my point was... Uh, with uh, the election coming up, we really don't need to worry about who the president is going to be because either way, uh, we're really just voting for the vice president. Why do you say that? Because, well, uh, frankly, McCain has cancer and pretty much every other disease known to man. He's on every medication that uh, a pharmacist can prescribe you. And, uh, you know... <laughs> With uh, Obama, you know, a lot of people speculating, and I'd like to go on record and say that I was the first one to say this. Uh, I don't think you were the first. Uh, I know, I know, but uh, I, I just like to think so. Uh, that uh, Today Obama I feel shot. like the luckiest man on the face of the earth. But um, anyway, I... <laughs> I just wanted to, to say that. Um, Not in know, second. Number two, Derek Jeter. Number two. <laughs> okay. Uh, the McCain campaign is nothing but, you know, a pandering campaign. They pander with Sarah Palin. They pander with Joe, the the plumber. They're, they, they've been pandering, you know, since day one. It, it's it's been nothing but, you the know, The light zone is for loading and unloading passengers only. What is that? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but I'd like to go out with a double bong rip, please. Uh, you need one, but <laughs> just to cover the echo. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Hanging Chad on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing I was great. Uh, your McCain thing, and I was just wondering: uh, Are you familiar with the Rothschild banking family? Of course. 
Okay, are you familiar with their campaign contributions to McCain's campaign and the party that they threw for him in London? Well, I have not been following the Federal Election Commission uh, data on that. Uh, why don't you update us? Uh, well, they, they paid for a party, a uh, campaign party for McCain that took place in the United Kingdom, which is kind of bizarre. Uh, I don't know why he would be in the United Kingdom taking parties from the Rothschild banking family, but... Uh, maybe you could tell us more why he would be doing that. Well, uh, I don't know uh, who Obama or McCain have been uh, having parties with and collecting money from. I really don't know. Uh, okay. All I know is these campaigns cost a lot of money, and these guys uh, do a deal with the devil to get elected. That's what they do. All right. Exactly. And I, it, 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 it is my guess. Well, you know, do we know who Barack Obama's parties have featured? I, I have no idea. Well, he's funded by the Rockefeller family, and McCain's funded by the Rothschilds, which is their typical... Uh, Who is the Bilderberger candidate? What's that? Who are the Bilderbergers supporting? Um, who knows? Probably both. That's how they work, right? <laughs> there we go. Another conspiracy theorist. Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time caller, long time listener. Yes. Hey, man. I love the show. I just want to say something that, you know, the single guy is probably the the guy that is need of a tax break. I mean, we're paying for schools uh, and things that we don't even use, you know, when we don't have children. So Prop 8, I'm all for it. I mean, if anyone uh, needs more rights to be taken care of, by all means, let, let someone else that uh, can have a family. But... I should also be up to that as well, you know, not having kids, you know, not using the school systems, being out of school. Yeah, my, really the tax system is screwed up. They ought to be giving people incentive not to be using uh, the school system, not to be using government benefits, not to be uh, doing any of those things. Instead, uh, they penalize people who don't use the system to pay for those who do. Exactly. I'm with you, brother. And, you know, it, it's amazing how, you know, the single guy does get discriminated. And we we all overlook it every day, you know, even trying to buy a house or what have you, you know. I totally agree with you. Appreciate the call. Thank you so much. And uh, one final reminder here. Any object thrown on the field of play will result in arrest. The Tom Likas Show.